until the binoculars i thought this was batman but then thought he couldn't batman didn't have a hook nose <laughs> and did not so, have a squared rimmed black glasses yeah. for this is the bird which had a curry like curry like stain oh yes God. so it was just short of becoming a curry a chicken curry or, or sorry sparrow curry but <laughs> saved it was literally saved by its skin in another way right Duh. so it's not like the bird actually melted his heart or something no like no that. not at all i think it was a very uh, slow uh, it was a love affair that took some time hello and welcome to the rare view I'm Jacob Koshi. I'm Shobhana K. Nair. And welcome to season two of the Rear View podcast. So we are back, back after a very small break. And Shobhana, what do you have to kick off this second season? Jacob, let me see if you can recognize the person we are going to discuss this oh, time. Oh, a quiz. Okay. Yeah. So he is no Avenger. He does not have a latex suit or a billowing cape or a sword or a shield. Instead, he wore black rimmed glasses, black rimmed square glasses on his hooked nose, which actually looks eerily like a owl's uh, bill. And his nose sat on a rather narrow face, but mostly a very smiling face. And in my head, he has binoculars. binoculars dangling from his neck and on his bag he's carrying a bag filled with diaries with detailed descriptions so when until the binoculars i thought this was batman but then thought he couldn't batman didn't have a hook nose <laughs> and did not so, have a squared <laughs> rimmed black glasses yeah. at least not the one that i remember so is it a bird is it a plane is it the superman of indian ornithology yes or salim ali the birdman of india ah that is an absolute uh, legend of this field it's somebody that you know we have grown up you know in, in us from school textbooks to even if you have not really like well versed in science but this is a name that it's is so associated with uh, it is history. almost synonymous with the uh, birding or ornithology that reminds me shobhna so now that we are on ornithology so of course i understand that you know apart from politics and parliament you are somebody who likes to wake up at you know when you when 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 you are not working you know you go off to these uh, to the hills or you go to bharatpur over here and wake up at unearthly hours with your camera and your binoculars looking for exotic birds so you are a resident birder expert in the in way the you are smiling jacob it's yeah. almost like as if you you're like keeping embarrassment on my absolutely head. not i totally i am not that. you've you you overstated my interest in the okay understated in, in the, the way you in the in the birding but yes i do enjoy an occasional uh birding uh, trip and it is in fact the best thing one can do uh, to sort of disconnect from the regular work mm-hmm. and you 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 absolutely lose yourself when what's the first most interesting bird that you sighted or or how did you get interested this in this in the first place for me uh, the first time when i was hooked because birding is actually a thriller because yeah. you first hear the sound and then you start following the sound and you start looking for this was in dandeli uh, dandeli uh, wildlife uh, um, the park in karnataka uh, my younger sister who uh, did uh, bsc uh, from uh, wildlife trust uh, wildlife institute of india had gone there for her own uh, uh, okay. uh, field study so you t- tagged along i tagged along and uh, i think it was the woodpecker so you hear the woodpeckers but it is so difficult to see a woodpecker in a very heavily uh, sort of uh, i know woodpeckers <laughs> i mean i'm terrible at birds but yeah woodpeckers are something like yeah that. and so to so straining your neck up to look for those birds because they're excellent in camouflage and the other incident i want to flag is very recently well not exactly recently but in january 2023 i was in bharatpur mm-hmm. and seeing a baby mottled owl was a beautiful experience did you have to climb trees did no, you have no. to bharatpur stake is... out at some machans no, for this no no unfortunately bharatpur is very easy it's almost it feels uh, like you're actually walking into a zoo because as long as if you have a guide who know exactly where the bird 
is yeah. perched they actually just you 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 can, i went with a with a wish list i said i need to see this 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 bird and my guide actually took me around and you ended up seeing yeah most seeing of most of them on my list but the seeing this mottled uh, uh, owl was beautiful experience because if you were to see its picture the owl practically uh, melts into the bark of oh, the so it's tree it's like an ultimate form of camouflage absolute camouflage unless and until you somebody is pointing that to you or you're looking through the binoculars or the your camera lens you will not be so able to spot it it's not like the it. harry potter bird uh, owl uh, like. no <laughs> and it is it is supposed to be a huge owl but what i saw was a tiny little baby owl so, so. tiny little bird actually kind of brings us to our bird man so it turns out that uh, salim ali's uh, was somebody who who was always around birds he describes it in his autobiography and uh, his primary interest in birds first was hunting them and you know with his cousins actually finding out a nice paste and putting uh, you know marinating it and you know having it for dinner it frying in, it with a blob of ghee so you wouldn't imagine that you know this is this guy who like to basically hunt and kill so he describes it that you know there was this one time when he uh, you know he found a bird and he said that it looked a little unusual from the other birds that he normally uh, seen and uh, he wanted to know not what the species was not what it looked like or something unusual about it he was it. some eight or uh, yeah, nine years like old so boy. i'm sure he was not yet and he wanted sort of... totally not into it and his interest in knowing was whether uh, i mean even when they before they actually um, ate the bird they had to observe the muslim customary law of, of halal halal so he wanted to know if uh, you know what was the right practice of uh halaling this bird that's why he took it to his yeah. uncle he who was a hunter he just wanted to avoid the purg pur- purgatory he just purg- wanted to <laughs> he just wanted to purgatory. Avoid- <laughs> he just wanted to avoid the hell the highway to hell so anyway after that he uh goes to the bombay national his uncle directs him to yes see remember this is he was born in 1896 so we are talking uh, early uh, 1900s uh, when the, uh, he 19, was he was late 19th century yeah when he went to um, the Nat- bombay natural history society and he was his uncle who was a well known shikari uh, he knew the bombay natural history society functionaries uh, the honorary secretary mr w s millard and he gave a letter because imagine a young boy walking into a museum say carrying a, 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 yeah. a corpse of a little tiny this is bird. a point this is a, this is a, the bnhs is an absolutely colonial kind of institution it's full yeah. of europeans and it's full of englishmen right? and he in fact writes in his uh, autobiography that he was really scared and this was his first uh, sort of one on one conversation mm-hmm. with an englishman wow. so it was an encounter that stayed stayed with him it's a beautiful passage uh, jacob uh, from his book he he writes about uh, mr millard okay one thing is one thing i want to say uh, salim ali was a brilliant writer so mm-hmm. his yeah, his course. his it's got a very evocative yeah so he writes as mr millard peered at me over his reading glasses i fumbled out my credentials and little and the little paper packet containing the mystery bird he identified it at a glance as a yellow throated sparrow bid me to follow to the reference cabinet from which he produced several stuffed specimens for this confirmation this is a bird which had a curry like st- curry like right. stain oh yes God. so it was just short of becoming a curry a chicken curry or oh, sorry sparrow curry but <laughs> saved it was literally saved by its skin in another way right yes yeah. so And anyways yeah that is where he sees these numerous other species of sparrows in the collection that millard actually took the took pains to show it to him and then it was uh, what did and then did his life just did he totally just uh, was he then associated with the bnhs for the rest of the rest of life what about was, skinning i mean yeah, how did he get introduced to the various aspects of so it took him time uh, remember as again i'm saying uh, it, this was he was just 8 uh, to 9 years old when this first encounter happened he obviously spent a lot of time collecting eggs and remember 
those are the times when there are no ipads or phones or insta reels to follow all you have is all the entertainment that you can get is through observing the nature and that is what he and his and he still continued shikaring it's not that he gave up shikaring in fact his biggest ambition was to become a big game hunter yeah. and uh, and it he, was a thing for its time yeah right? and he writes a famous one if possible <laughs> you know it's not enough that i become a big hunter so it's not like the bird actually melted his heart or something no or no not like at that. all i think it was a very uh, slow uh, it was a love affair that took some time uh, to uh, yeah to and start. eventually it turned so much that you know he eventually became one of india's most foremost environmentalists you know arguing and campaigning for the protection of bird and species but again we'll of course come to that and there is a long journey that he's uh, uh, you know made over here is there something like a, a professional ornithologist i mean did he start doing surveys in so yes uh, uh, so so one thing about salim ali is he's a very chill character he he really um uh, did not bother about having targets or goals or 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 being successful he dropped out of his college because he was finding he maths, math. maths very tough totally my kind of a man mm-hmm. and uh, he joined his brother in myanmar uh, burma i mean then burma and now myanmar to work on a tungsten mine Okay. And uh, but he For returned yeah. Yeah, but he returned to graduate in zoology. He was he he did realize after working briefly that that was not his calling. He was not even then in Burma, he used to spend his weekends chasing uh the feathered beings and looking for uh, them and collecting specimens and he had been doing that but that was still just a hobby but he comes back to bombay so he's spent his childhood in bombay and one must read the book a uh, fall of a sparrow to see beautiful descriptions of uh, earlier of how of bombay looked in 1900 the, in the 1900s and yeah bombay um but you know it, and and he was never serious about his career and he was never into all that but one thing he really wanted and he sort of ached for was the zoological survey of india had advertised a post of ornithologist uh, but salim ali was rejected because he did not have masters or phd and there were many other applicants with better qualification who were better qualified than him but salim ali writes in retrospect i feel it was the luckiest thing that could have happened to me as it saved me from ending up as a fossilized bureaucrat yeah. so he went on later on to work as guide lecturer at the natural history section of the prince of wales museum he worked there for about 2 years and then he also went to uh, germany eventually to uh, a place called heligoland He was uh, he was he went to study ornithology ornithology yes. at the Berlin University Zoological Museum. Uh, in fact, there is a, a little bit of a side here. He had actually written also to the London uh, um, Zoological Museum, but he was he did not get any response. So now we will actually be discussing ha- uh, Salim Ali's multiple forays into various states of India and how he. actually became the ornithologist that he that he that he's uh, revered as as well as uh, his connections to 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 the most important political personalities of his era and his a uh, very strident environmentalism for all of this and much more please tune in to any platform any of the podcast platforms that you can catch the rear view on